we see Netflix as this great success today, but there was a key inflection point in Netflix when it changed from a DVD business to a streaming business. And you cover this as a case within your book. Absolutely. So the Netflix example is fascinating to me because most companies don't see these inflection points early. And so they, they lag in how they respond to them. Whereas Reed Hastings at Netflix had always thought from the beginning that it would be a streaming business. And he's been interviewed saying that, that he thought, oh, you know, we thought it was going to be 2002. Then we thought it was going to be 2004. Then we thought it was going to be. And, and yet and this is another ecosystem story, right? Because, you know, we need for Netflix's streaming business to be successful. We needed a critical mass of people to have high speed, always on one price internet in their homes. Uh, and that took a long time to happen. I think it first started to be a reality right around 2000. Um, and if you think about how you got on the internet before that, right, it was dial up modem. And, ah, ah, you know, that, that, that thing. So we Hastings um, very presciently said the DVD business will go away. Uh, we're going to switch to all streaming. And he did it very early. And his solution uh, was to split the company and the DVD part was going to be called Quickster. And so he went to market with this thing that said, okay, customers, you know, you want to be a Quickster customer, you get to keep your DVD shipments. Uh, but if you want to be a Netflix customer, you're going to be, you know, streaming. And he had two different prices. I think it was $7.99 for each service. So customers who've been getting both for some time thought this was a massive price increase. That was the first upsetting thing. Secondly, the queues were different. So if you wanted to get a, a hot movie, uh, you had to put it and you wanted it you sort of get it to me whenever, I'll take the whatever comes first, right? You had to put it in both queues. So you had that two queues. But worst of all, the streaming selection was much more limited than the DVD selection. So customers went into a fury. I was absolute outrage about this. And uh, Hastings <laughs> reportedly wrote back to his team. He said, I'm here at an investor conference. I think I'm going to need a food taster. <laughs> <laughs> and my argument in the book was that directionally, this was the right thing to do, but he didn't look at it through the customer's eyes. And so they very famously walked back on that. And to me, like what he should have done was almost the reverse of when you enter a new market. When you enter a new market, you you capture the early adopters first, and then you make your modifications, you get this next generation, what Jeff Moore is famously called crossing the chasm. Then you get your mainstream adopters and so forth. What they could have done was eased customers out of their dependence on DVD. So the first tranche could have been, okay, you know, we'll, we'll charge you less if you agree to go streaming only. And that would have picked up a few of the early adopters. And then it could have been, hey, we'll give you, you know, more selection if you go streaming. You know, in other words, sort of ease customers out of the DVD business without shoving them out of it you know, in this very rough way. Anyway, what happened was they basically had to walk that back. They said, sorry, never mind. <laughs> Our bad. Uh, but it still left them with this problem of what do I do with this mature business going into the time? And what they decided to do was they said, all right, we're going to run it as a mature business. So they picked a, a top-notch operations guy to run it. They moved the headquarters of that business about 40 miles away from Netflix's main headquarters. Um, and they gave him the instructions. They said, keep this thing going, run it for efficiency, run it for cost. Because the great thing about a business in decline is you're not making investments to grow it. You're making investments basically to become more efficient. So you can be insanely profitable as a declining business, even as you're not growing. And that's in fact what's happened. So they've since rebranded it as DVD.com. So if you look up DVD.com, you'll see a DVD.com and Netflix company on their, on their website. Um, and that's, what it's like, you know, it's, it's, uh, and so they've got about three or four million, you know, die hard customers, which is nothing compared to Netflix's main customer base. Those people don't have great internet access, or they just prefer DVDs or whatever it is. They like their red envelopes and they're very happy. <laughs> they're 